It's not too loud? Not too loud. Well, we want it loud. That's what this is all about. Isn't I know. We it? almost got arrested last night because it was too loud. Uh, welcome to Casino Ballroom, man. The uh, historic, historic it's spot. legendary. The fact that Zeppelin in 69 was on this day. It's not bad going, is That'll it? That'll do it. That'll do it. So what's the evolution of the, uh, the N4? The letters on my guitar were not because of the model. They were right. letters that I numbered through the years, of the guitars that were important to me. So by the time Washburn wanted to do the model, uh, the next, when they gave me the first one, I put the N4 sticker on it. I used to buy them at truck stops on tour, actually. When I retired my N4, I, I, I was carrying it a lot, and it was almost stolen three times. I, I tried to find the exact models of that, that year that were made production-wise, and I literally, they were signed. I, I would buy these from fans that would come into meet and greets. I think I might have gotten this one in the UK, actually. Okay. And then, uh, like, I would have signed it to this person, what, 99, 97, whatever it says there. And, I, and so the, I could at least feel it. But when I wanted to sticker it, I couldn't just rename it N4 because yeah. there was only one. So I, I, I thought it would be the bizarro twin brother of it. This guitar, it looks... It's quite sm is it small or is that just me imagining? I'm just a big fucking dude. Yeah, that's what it is. No, it's smaller. It looks It's smaller. Really and nice. it's actually obviously like a strat shape, but a normal strat would have been about that much more all the way around. But because I was a smaller dude, yeah. I always, whenever I played this, even though it's my favorite body type, I always felt like it was a little bit, didn't fit, suit me. So I wanted to kind of do it for, you know, we have clothes like small, medium, large. Why yeah. can't we do it with guitars? No, so yeah, but but it's always this. You know, it's 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 to scale. But and obviously the you know the cutaway is unique. But uh, yeah, it is smaller. This is quite amazing. I mean, how does it make you feel when you come out and you've got your guitar on like this? When you put that guitar on, does it give you that kind of confidence and a, an element of you could just like take on the world with this guitar? Oh, without a doubt. It's a super, it's your superpower. Yeah. What you have to know is that the second you pick up a guitar and you play, you are invincible. Yeah, nobody I, can stop you. Nobody can call you. It. Nobody can tell you you're uncool, whatever it is. Like guitar is the ultimate sexiest fucking coolest fucking thing you can do, period. Sorry. 100%. So what's, what um, songs will you play this guitar on? All of them. I'm a one guitar man. That's Eight just guitars. for a backup in case, right, in case that one. goes down, which never does. That'll so probably happen your, tonight. You've got your 12 string there. 12. And I got the six string, which is like for Midnight Express and More Than Words. But I've always played, it's an acoustic, but I've always played the solid body one that Washer made me years ago. And I haven't been able to not play it. I don't even know if they even make them. But uh, yeah. Why did you go with Washburn? It's not an obvious choice, is it? I went with Washburn because when I was very, very, very young, first album of Extreme was coming. Yeah, it was always, you know, it was always the Gibson, Fender, you know, like the, pretty much, and everybody else in between. Kramer Ibanez, and stuff Ibanez like that Kramer at the time. At the time. Yeah. But they wanted me, nobody else did. I was the youngest 10 kids in my family. We were on welfare, pretty much. And I said, all I wanted to do when I went away is like, all I want to do is take care of paying my mom's rent and making sure she has a home. And I'm like, they were like, how much is that? I forget how much it was. I don't know, 300 a month, 500 yeah. a month, whatever it was. I said, you pay me that and I'll do it. And they're like, we can't do that. We've never set a set of precedents for paying us on. Then I'm like, okay, bye. And they're like, wait, 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 wait. I said, so you pay, you, you send me that to my mom every month. And, and also, I don't want to play any of your guitars. They're like, what? I go, I want to play mine. Mine was made of parts with no paint. The reason there was no paint is because I couldn't afford to buy a guitar, a proper guitar that's painted. So I went and got body parts. So I got a neck, a neck, separate body, and they were raw. They had no paint. They were warmth parts. So that's how I cut it together, brought it in to a friend of mine, and had it shave it down. And that was it was born there. But it, and they never had paint because it was because of I was poor. But what happened is once I started doing paint on my guitars, I hated the way they fucking sounded. They don't sound as warm and as, as the paint is really brittle. It adds a really weird sound to it. So, and I liked the way, and I wanted the sweat and everything and everything that you did through the years. I wanted the yeah, guitar to, be to change cool. with you and to grow with you. So whatever you, wherever you played hard, wherever you sweat, wherever there was blood on the back of the guitar, it went into the wood. And that was 
all your personalities on your guitar. So you basically become, the guitar becomes you. I've been using this thing since I was like 15. Oh, I think I read about it. And all this. it does, they, they, they have stopped making them like decades ago. I don't really use them that much. I, they, like everything you hear me play for 95% is, is just straight. It's quite clean. Into the amp, straight in. But that's, that's because you're good at playing, isn't it? Well, it's you all need, here. It's all here in the nail polish. One thing I've noticed about you is you always have your left hand painted. That, is not, that is not correct. Look, what are you talking about? No, you haven't got it now. Oh, but that's why, right. But how come? How, why do you always do this? Uh, aside from Arrested Development? Uh, you see, it's when I was uh, much younger, back in the 1900s. Um, we, I was obviously obsessed with Queen, and Queen and Aerosmith, especially, were what, like two of the two of the kind of rock bands that really influenced me a lot. And both of Freddie Mercury had his nails painted black, and Tyler as well. Did they just do one hand as well? No. That's where I took it to the next ah, level. That's how you make that's I how took you them Nuno did. and the Michael Jackson one glove. Okay. And thought, man, this is this is like this is historic, iconic. Yeah. Truth is is I'm a righty and I couldn't do my right hand with my left hand. That's 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 that. what I wondered about it. Why you only did one? You tried it and you Well, you know what? I, I actually to be honest with you, yeah, it was always hard to do do this with my left hand. Uh, but I also realized that as a guitar player, nobody ever saw my right hand anyways, the nails. And, and when I did try to do it, it would um, it would destroy them within like a song they'd yeah. be gone through. Songs I'm like, oh, this is a waste of time. Yeah, sure. So you know, it's and uh, and then I was just like, okay, this is a good phase. I went through that phase and I liked it. And then I I was over it, you know. And this is uh, and then but then I had this moment where I uh, a moment of panic. I was gotten so used to when I was playing guitar that I looked down. If you look at you know your fingers are very kind of pale and mm. neutral color and they just look like these fingers. Yeah. I was getting so used to seeing those dots, these black dots, and it was like as if I was following some sort of, I don't, know, I don't even know how to describe it. They it were like, guiding you. They were almost. guiding me, like I knew where they were going, wherever they were going on the neck, they were, it was a clear when I did a chord, when I went, did a note, like I could, I could see what I was playing. Okay. Not, just, not just like finger it, but actually see these kind of notes. Yeah. And, um, and I started like sucking a little bit more than normal when I didn't uh, when I didn't have them painted. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is for real. I'm not I'm not joking. I was just like, what the fuck? What what's happening here? So I did an experiment, play without it, and then I did it kind of with them, and it was just like I was like, oh, it was like I it was like I got my bearings back. So ever since then, to the point that if I forget to paint them, like I almost forgot tonight and you're coming to save the day obviously because I I'm gonna paint your nails on, for you. Are you gonna yeah, let me do it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean nobody's ever painted my nails before, so I figured like this is like you know, this Let's is do this, it. This, 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 you know what what better place than do it here. And I, I sometimes to the point that I panic if I'm on stage and I've forgotten I grab a black Sharpie from my guitar tech and I paint him with the Sharpie right before I go on because I don't even think I can play without it anymore. Oh my God. It's, it's, it's crazy. Have you tried different colors? Because you normally have black, don't you? What yeah. color have you got now with this? Oh, it's, 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 I love it's, this. it's, it's the, this is called the None More Black. It's the Spinal Tap uh, series. <laughs> the None More Black, like the, the album None cover. More black. And, uh, and then I've used like, you know, when I toured with Rihanna, I think I was using white. Can't use black with Rihanna, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna okay. do the wrong hand. We have to swap, don't we? Because I can't paint this here. What do you mean? Are you a lefty or a righty? I'm righty, but we're gonna. Oh, have you're to go a righty, like so. Oh, swap round. Okay. <laughs> this, this wasn't in the deal. This is a lot of work. No, this is alright. We're just we're having fun. I hope you're good at this. What about if you have the best show ever? Then it's gonna be like you need then me you're coming here on every... tour as my yeah. my private nail uh, nail specialist. Oh my god! Can you imagine? So have you ever let anyone else paint your nails? So you never let Rihanna do this? No. Okay. What was it like touring with her? Oh, it was amazing, actually. I, I was uh, surprised that it was what it was, you know, because normally when, you, when somebody uh, hits you up if you want to play guitar with a, you know, quote unquote pop artist, yeah. everybody thinks it's just like it's the track, nobody's really playing. Mm -hmm. and, and I was really pleasantly surprised. I was like, well, why, why would she want me there? Why? You know, there's no guitars on it. And they said, that's why. She wanted to do the, the tour, make it a bit heavier, make it rock a little bit. And, uh, and I said, so 
is there parts? Do I do I get to do? There's no you get to do whatever you want and you know ruin those get to ruin those amazing hits and those classic songs and so I got to really do treatments with it and then the biggest surprise was the the band was insane. You know these are guys that play with Stevie Wonder and every other artist and uh, the amount of jams that we did at sound checks and even when we did I think it was. 320 shows at 02 in a row, whatever it was. Maybe it was yeah. 10 or 11, I don't know. But we had a, sp a, a spare room where we actually started setting up gear in this room on tour. And we had these, we would play after hours till four in the morning, have these jams. Really? Full blown, fusion, crazy, free form, the whole band, keys, everything. And sometimes Rihanna would pop in, sometimes we'd do a Bob Marley track or something, but it was just like an after party that we would just do in this massive dress room for ourselves and whoever was there. So it became like an incredible, uh, I learned a lot, especially like playing, I had never played as a side man, so, so yeah. to speak. I was always in my own band. And I remember um, everybody kind of looked at it at first as like, oh, you know, what are you selling out a little bit? You're playing, you know, as it's a gig, a cushy gig. And I'm like, come to the gig, check it out. And um, everybody was always blown away at how musical it was. And, and not difficult, but yeah, you know, it wasn't, it was complex. There's a lot of layers and a lot of different stuff to play. <laughs> Any artist who's told you, looked you in the eye or that camera and said, I do it for the fans, is full of shit. Every single one of them. Every single one of them is full of fucking shit. Yeah, you're doing it for you're yourself. You're doing it for yourself. You do it for yourself, and what that means is that's okay. You, you love your fans, you love the relationship, you can't do this without them, yeah. but you have to, the fans will know if you're not doing it for yourself. And the, the day I learned that is like, one of the tours we did in clubs back in the day, playing for nobody in the room was with Alice in Chains. And it was the first tour Extreme did together with like kind of a, a national, we're doing clubs, nobody's there. It was like, we called it a roadie convention. Like we, we would ask our road crew to go out and be in the crowd so we could actually have an audience there. And, <laughs> But I remember, I remember being in the first gig we did, st the tour we started with was in, in Mexico, right over the border in Tijuana. Right. And it was a place called Iguanas. Okay. And it was a shithole, we were all shitholes we were playing, but they were you know, badass shitholes, right? Like club, rock clubs. Yeah. We're playing, nobody there. And I remember Alice in Chains walking up and seeing them at Soundcheck. And I remember Lane Staley, the singer, they rocked up, they did their sound check, and their stuff is very like, it was very kind of like already just mid-tempo and really fucking airy, and I'm like, wow. I was watching, I'm like, this is cool, this is different. And I'm like, great, that was Soundcheck. Then they came out to do the show. You know, and when they were at Soundcheck, I'm gonna get up, Lane comes up, and he's just like, grabs his mic, and he closes his eyes, and he did. That's a typical Lane song. And he did his thing at Soundcheck. I thought, cool. When he came up for the show, he grabbed his mic, did this thing, and he closed his eyes, and he sang pretty much the whole fucking show with his eyes closed. And I remember, just, I couldn't take my eyes off. At top to that point, I used to think, oh, you had to fucking run around and jump around and like entertain and be fucking, if you're not moving, if you're not fucking putting on a show, you're boring and it's like, you're not really all in. I used to think that's what all in meant. Right. And then I realized when I saw Lane singing and I could, it, it, it was so magnetic and there was nothing really physically happening. It was like concrete shoes were on. But I remember a couple of people, maybe not in my band or crew or friends coming up and goes, they watched me was like, I don't get it, man. I was like, I'm like, you don't, you don't oh, get it? Wow. I had like chills watching this band because I learned that night that I want to go where the fuck he's going. He's not here. And, and then that's when it clicked for me. That's when I learned the math of a live show is you're not here to be the clown to entertain the audience or put on the show. The audience is coming in here to go with you. Yeah. Bass notes in between it. It's all this dumb stuff. So let me let me try the, the first little bit. I'll give it back to you because I know you're practicing. So it's well, a shitty gigs and eggs, it won't be warmed up. Yeah, I know, it's my fault. If I put it in the right. Yeah. Yeah. Just... yeah. Something like that? Yeah. But the thing is, is when you go to the next note, it's got to be clear. It's got to be there, so it's just... Yeah, but it's phoned in. You don't do the top. Yeah, that's it. That's the, that's the first that's bit. That's the first bit. Second bit is... 
No, they're together, yeah. are they? No, no. No, it's not together. No, yeah, bone and then you change chords. You stay What's where you are. You stay. No, 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 no. Stay. Yeah. Do as I tell you! No, here we go. That's why I was Oh, it's to there. Right, got you. So it's there. They just come down here. So And then then I go down. Hold on. This is this is why. I'm trying to take the gain off so we can go. To get a bit cleaner. This is why we should do it when our brain's working. So it's the three, the three, and you kind of... It's two, it's two. Just two? It's not three? I don't know. You don't know, you just do it. I have to play it, I don't know. I don't pay attention. Because you just do it so naturally. I'm going to let you practice though, because I don't want you to... No, 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 it's just... Until just now, I never knew I went from two high strings to two low ones. I've never, never known I did that. I'm making you analyze it all. Got yeah. Coming in. But such a beautiful chord progression that it's quite simple. But there's just the combination yeah, of the chords I think, with the way that you're picking it. And I think the best parts are that are the part that was always unpredictable. Somebody was at the fucking door. <laughs> was Seriously. that what that was? No. Yeah. So I decided to keep it in there. It was like. Um, your nail polish looks good, by the way. Are you happy with it? It's interesting. It's different. You definitely did it more in the uh, the female touch to it. Oh, because it's, it's too like, neat. It's just right. It's more like in the center. Like you, you definitely know how to not do the edges. Where when I do it, it just seeps yeah. into all the edges, which is good. <laughs> I think people are gonna notice. They're going to be like, look at these girly fingers. Not, maybe not visually, but they'll hear it. Check out the full interview and a load more on Access TV.